Welcome to TNA. That's Trends and Angles, guys. I'm Kelly Stewart, joined by Ralph Michaels. It's going to be a new segment we're going to do on Wager Talk TV, sometimes in studio, maybe sometimes I can catch Ralph, uh, you know, on a Wednesday afternoon before the games kick off. Tip off, sorry, mainly yeah, basketball football right now. Football always, but basketball we could do a couple days a week just from our offices and talk about some of those games that night so people can get used to tuning in nightly. So let's start off. We're going to go over some of the basics first. Um, I know a lot of you guys are probably privy to sports betting, but I want Ralph to break it down for the newbie guys. So we have trends and we have systems. Can you explain the difference between those two? Well, trends and angles are simply specific to one team. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, trends are silly or angles are stupid and I don't follow them. But, Daddy. you know, you know <laughs> my, my disagreement is this. A trend is just a representation of how a team is playing. If a team is a good home favorite or if a team is shooting well and covering the spread, it's silly to ignore a 10 and one angle because it's telling you this team has overachieved what Vegas does. Now there are some systems and angles that are that are silly and have multiple sources and I understand that where, you, but a normal basic trend I think is what everyone handicaps and follows. You have a team playing well against a team playing poorly. That's handicapping 101 into the situation. You know, I have, we have a couple systems we're going to talk about, and systems are different, whereas a system can apply to any team in a certain situation. So I put much more stock in a system. If a team gets hot, they may reel off seven or straight ATS wins and then fall back and lose three or four and just be a 50 or 60 percent angle. But a system over multiple years shows you that this scenario or this situation situational spot is something you should look at for future games to help you with your handicapping. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over a couple that I pulled out, couple for February only and couple that are just year to date here that people can say, hey, I never thought of that or I should pay attention to that. Okay, before we get into that, let's talk about trend. Go back to the trends real, real quick. Not all trends may be cre created equal here. So talk to me about that where one t team might be 8-1 and one against the spread, but so is another team. But this team's 8-1. and one. They may have been absolutely blowing out opponents, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, buyer beware. You know, I'm going to give you an example. I, I went through and pulled down a couple 8-1 and one trends. And an 8-1 and one trend for one college team had a, had a cover margin of 2.2 points per game. Well, skin if you're 8-1 and one and you're covering every game by two points, that means one basket going the other way, you could be four and five, you could be five and four, you could be one and eight. There, there really isn't a, a base there to say, I'm going to base it on this team. Likewise, if you have an eight and one system where the average cover is by 10 or 12 or 14 points, you know that team is easily exceeding the expectations based on what the Vegas spread is. So when you're looking at when you're looking at trends, looking at angles, look at the situations, but delve in deeper into how into how strong that angle is based on the average cover margin. All right, let's go to situational systems now. Some of my favorite situations may be a look ahead, uh, sandwich games in between two big opponents. You're just playing kind of a cupcake type school. What are you have four specific uh, situations you look at specific to good old Ralph Michaels since 2014 when you are off a loss as a favorite of 11 or more you would think most of the time uh, your thought would be that's a good team they were an 11 point favorite and they would rebound to play well the next game well since 2014 the team that lost by 11 or more as a favorite is 163 and 156, 51.1%. But in February only, those same teams are 23 and 38, almost just 30% win margin in the same situations. You have you're playing teams the second time. You're playing your conference opponents that know you better. So in February, the same is not true. So a situation that's worked for you in November and December is actually a negative come February. And that 51% record includes the February record in there. So it's probably closer to 52 or 53% in the non-February months and only 23 and 38 in February. All right. Now, what else do you have? I'm, I love all of these notes, except I can't read your chicken scratch. Okay. So that one's exclusive to February. Do you have one that's not? Maybe season long or headed into well, March Madness? Yeah, we talked about Virginia and laying points with a low total. Well, this year, this entire season, double-digit favorites with an over-under of 126 or less. 
It doesn't happen that often. Those double-digit favorites with a low total are 13-1 and one straight up. But they're 1-12-1 and one against Ooh. the spread. Virginia has lost four times in that role as a double-digit favorite with a very low total. You mean late. lost against the spread? L lost APS, okay. yes. And just, just a side note, they're 11-2-1 and one over under. So you think a team is a dominant team laying double digits with a low total. Well, they, they tend to slack off. You're a big favorite. You may not play the same intensity. So again, you're 13 and one straight up, but 112 and one ATS, 11, two and one over under. All right, you have a couple more of those. We're going to get in uh, here a little bit later in the show. We're going to get into some Friday, Saturday game specific to this week. But give me your last two situations. February only. You're a home favorite of 12 or more and you're a losing team. Your win percentage is under 50%. That's the only scenario. So you could be 11 and 12, you could be 12 and 13, you could be eight and 15, anything under 50%. If you're a home favorite or 12 or more, you're slightly showing a profit going 21 and 17 against the spread, but you're 30 and eight over under. 30 overs, eight unders, 79%. Why? Well, you're a losing team. You're not going to win your division. You, you are playing well because you're a double-digit favorite. You, you put in guys. They have good offensive success against a weaker team. That weaker team, this team's usually not a double-digit favorite. So, again, 30 overs, 8 unders. That wow. goes back since 2014. And the last one, teams that are, have 20-plus wins and six or fewer losses as a home dog. So it's not going to happen very often. You, you know, it's going to be late in the year in February. Uh, but since 2015, those teams are only 1-9 straight up, 1-8-1 and one ATS. Now, that was Virginia Tech against Virginia yeah. last week. That was Toledo against Buffalo. You have quality teams that are probably close, second or third in the conference against a team that's probably first or second in the conference. Not a lot of games, only 10 games since 2015. But if you're thinking, hey, I have a 20-win team. I needed to know that as before I played dog. Virginia Tech the so, other night. Again, ah. so those are just four systems to talk about. You know, as you said, we have some team specific angles now what I'd like doing and we're gonna I'm gonna run through five or six of these for Friday and Saturday and they're complementary angles because one angle is for one team that does well the other team is for a team doing poorly or it's for both teams doing well to the under or both teams that perform to the over. One on Friday, if you're watching this a little early, uh, you know, it's, it's a game that some people may not watch, Iona and, Ma and Manhattan. But both side and total apply in this. Iona is 2-11 and 11 against the spread on the road. Manhattan has, uh, has covered six straight overall. And then... Manhattan is 1-9-1 and one over under their last 11 games. Iona has gone under eight straight. So those systems, those angles are telling you to play Manhattan and the under. And I, they have been such a good under team. Yeah. I get Ralph's notes, you, side, side note, I get Ralph's notes every week. And I love it because I get those little tidbits that I'm normally not looking for. I'm not looking for these off the I mean, radar you see type Manhattan teams. Manhattan totals, that's total may be 119. Yeah. It's going to be one of the lowest totals you have yeah. all year. And just because we're using these, I am still not going to base a play just on these angles, but if both systems or both angles are complementing towards one side, it certainly makes me look at that team deeper. Right, and here's something I've noticed, especially with some of these off-the-radar teams with these really low totals that you will send, or even sometimes Dave Koken will send, it's actually crazy that if they have a really good first half and you bet that second half under, and let's say the new adjusted total is 137 instead of 119, it's a dead under the second half. I think they're like 5-0 and oh every time I've done that. Yeah, and it's it's, the really, I've gotten burned a few times. They've gone into overtime, or yeah. it, you get to be a 10 or a 15 point margin, and the team start fouling so early, and and you can lose by that. But you know, let's just come some of the top for Saturday. These games are all Saturday. Uh, Cal Poly at home, they've lost 10 straight against the spread. Hawaii is 10 and three ATS their last 13 games. I'm your, these down. your Kansas State team. 9-2 against the spread the last 11. Oklahoma State 2-7 and seven ATS on the road. And Oklahoma State's off a big home win. They are. That's I did even, have Oklahoma State That's in an that even one. better spot. Baylor 7-2 and two ATS at home. West Virginia 2-9 and nine ATS, including five straight losses on the road. West Virginia probably one of the worst road teams this year. Their guard problems are horrendous away from home. And okay, they've, at home they've played okay. 
Couple more, Loyola, Merrimont, two and 14 over under on the road, Pacific two and nine over under at home. I love the unders. Wow. And when these two teams play like the Manhattan and Iona game, it's not defensive numbers you're looking at, it's pace you're looking at. Like adjusted tempo? Yeah, okay. some teams, I mean, you could find it at Ken Palm, you could find it at Bartorvik.com, uh, you could find it has, uh, has, met, has metrics. Yeah. All three of those have a tempo site win, are all very good that you can look at to see how they're playing. A couple more, St. Mary's, uh, 27 and 60 over under. You heard me right. Since wow. 2011, they're 27 and 60. Their coach just wants to play slow. San Diego, one and seven over under at home. And lastly, Wisconsin, one and nine over under their last 10, including six straight unders on the road. Northwestern, five, 13 and one over under. Lastly, couple that don't apply to this Saturday, but are undefeated or have at least have 10 wins. Miami, Ohio, 0 and 12 over under as a dog. Marshall 0 and 10 ATS their last 10 games. Minnesota 0 9 and 1 over under as an away favorite. UL Monroe 20 and 2 over under as a home favorite. And East Tennessee State 17 and 1 over under as a home favorite. Wow. That doesn't apply this Saturday, but that's something For to the take future. towards next week. All right, guys. Awesome stuff from Ralph. I hope you enjoyed your first segment of TNA. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to tweet Ralph at Cal Sports LV, tag me in it at Kelly in Vegas. Also, you guys can lock in a full seven days of all of Ralph's picks for less than $10 a day using coupon code R69 when checking out for his seven days. All Access Pass.